the rise in popularity of dynasty fantasy football it's not lost on me not nearly as much as where the clitoris is sorry bee stings there are a lot of people out there that want to join a dynasty fantasy football league whether that's starting one with their homies their colleagues whoever their family their mothers or at least join one we're going to solve both of those problems today this video is going to go step by step a to z zero through a zillion how to set up the perfect dynasty fantasy football league if you're saying to yourself right now i can't find 11 other people to start a league with i've got a solution for that as well a place where you can join dynasty leagues with other competitive like-minded sick fucking individuals like yourself so stay tuned for that as well so this video is going to go from clicking start league on the sleeper app all the way through the 28th round of your startup draft and everything in between. Dynasty fantasy football is a whole nother animal. It ain't like redraft or season long. It ain't like keeper leagues. So get out of here with the comments of like, I'm in a dynasty league. We keep four players each year. Fam, that ain't a dynasty league. That's a fucking keeper league of keeping four players. Different animal. Now, this video, I understand, is not necessarily for most of my audience. Most of y'all are a little bit more salt and pepper to the dynasty game. You're in a few leagues. You're in a dozen leagues. Or you've already started one or two leagues, okay? So this is for more newcomers. This is to attract new players. This is just to help the people that don't know how to set up a dynasty league. But I think if you're already in dynasty leagues, you might be able to pick and choose a few spots from this video, throughout the video, of my favorite league settings that you want to try implementing into your league. Or you could simply just argue in the comment section about why I'm an idiot for that being my favorite setting. You know, whatever sinks your submarine. So we've got all your solutions, starting a league, joining a league, everything fantasy football related. So if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. We're covering everything fantasy football from strategies to how-tos, from season long to dynasty. Put the D in the subscribe. Hit the button that looks like this while you're down there. And a few notes before we tuck our shirts in and hit the beautiful intro. Uh, starting a dynasty league can be tricky. It takes a lot of commitment from a lot of people. It's also complex just in terms of the settings. The goal of this video is not just to show you how to set up a dynasty league or to join one. The goal is to set one up so that it has longevity to it, okay? I want you to start a fantasy league, a dynasty league, one that people don't join, get really excited about the startup draft, and then you have seven orphans. Orphans means, you know, you're in the Dynasty League for the long term. You draft a big team, you own those players forever. We don't want people dropping out in year two where you have to refill it, right? The whole strategy of Dynasty Fantasy Football is to build a team. You're trying to build a dynasty. You're trying to win the championship three out of the next five years by accumulating future value, by getting good players that hit for the next couple of years, et cetera, et cetera. So the goal of this video is not just to show you how to set up a Dynasty League, but to show you how to set up a successful dynasty league that will last for a long time that will hopefully keep all 12 original members in it for at least three, four, five years. People are going to dip just because people suck. All right. But your dynasty league will not suck at the end of this video. So don't be intimidated. I understand dynasty leagues can be complex. There are a lot of rules and there's this thing called paralysis by analysis where you simply just have too many fucking choices when you start something. So you're like, I'm probably going to fuck this up. So I'm just going to turn around and not do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold your hand through this entire thing. I'm going to take you on a stroll through the park, maybe buy you ice cream. At the end of it, I'm going to ask for your mother's phone number. We're both getting something out of this relationship. But for now, all you got to do is tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling and get ready to eat. All right, so for the, the majority of the rest of the video, I think probably the entirety of the rest of the video will be done on the Sleeper platform. Now, it's being done on the Sleeper platform because Sleeper is my favorite website, my favorite app to start to play Dynasty Fantasy Football on, without a doubt. Every other platform that you can think of that even offers Dynasty, which is really a low volume to begin with, like stopped innovating in the year 2002. Someone told them that the internet was going to crash in the millennium in the year 2000. And they were like, fuck it, we're just not going to update anything because it ain't going to work afterwards. And they stuck with that marketing plan for the rest of their lives. Even my second favorite Dynasty platform, Flea Flicker, hasn't made a single site change in the five years that I've been playing on it. All right. But Sleeper, which can be found on sleeper.app, or you can download the Sleeper actual app on mobile. 
Uh, the design can be a little bit loud for some people, but to be fair, they are a tech company first. So their team is constantly looking at the aesthetic and trying to build on the demographic that they're you know trying to target. They're innovating. They're pushing the platform forward. Um, I actually did an interview with their founder and CEO, Nan Wang, last year, uh, which was really, really awesome. A lot of you guys really, really enjoyed that. So if you happen to you know be interested in like business or tech or just the fantasy platform in general, you can go search Nick Ercolano with Nan Wang and you'll be able to find that on the YouTube. Anyways, yes, sleeper.app. So you're going to head over to Sleeper. And you're going to have to sign up if you don't already have a login for this website. This is a little noisy, obviously, right now, because this is I already have leagues on the platform. So it looks like there's a lot of shit going on. But don't worry. I'm assuming it'll take you to a homepage where it's telling you to like join a league or start a league or whatever. And for us, who, some people that already have a league, you're going to see this league portion over here where it says leagues. And then there's a plus button. So we're going to hit the plus button to create a league. And... We are going to click fantasy football, not fantasy lols. Hilarious. Fantasy football. BDGE tutorial video dynasty league. Number of teams. Now, the number of teams. I'm going to try not to waste my time on settings in this video that are the exact same for redraft as they are for dynasty. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, it's good to have a 12 team league because it's more fun and more competition because you guys already know that from redraft and season long. That has nothing to do with actual dynasty. So we'll say 12. Logo. What can we do for a logo? Let me put Ike up there. That eh, doesn't fucking matter. You can put whatever logo you want. Hit next. League type. We're going to go with dynasty, obviously. Draft type, we'll go with snake and create the league. Obviously, you can do auction if you want. You can do snake. You could do whatever, however you guys want to draft as a dynasty league. So the league is created. Now, we have to set all of the settings, and this is going to be the juice of this video. So you click the little uh, gear icon on the top right, and you can do all this from their mobile app too. Their mobile app is actually way cleaner than their desktop app, um, but either will suffice. So 12 teams, and we're going to get back to some of the more um, like in-season type settings in a while. So we might jump around the different settings list on the left side, but bear just bear with me. We will go through everything that you guys probably have questions about. Okay, uh, let's go over to, you can go to team settings and change your name, Nikki Clickbait. Roster settings. Now, I know I said I wouldn't waste my time talking about like roster settings and starting settings when it comes to Dynasty versus Redraft, but I do think this is really fucking important. Dynasty is a, a relatively like new popular game type, right? It's been around for a while, but the recent, or like I said before, the recency of the popularity that this game has taken hold of has really, really exploded in the last two years. There are a lot of fantasy football settings that have kind of exploded in the last two years as well, and they've kind of become synonymous. And what I'm referring to is the idea of playing with multiple quarterbacks. So the way that most of my leagues set up their rosters or the way that most of my leagues have their uh, starting positions and bench spots is this. One quarterback, two running backs, up to you if you want to do two or three wide receivers. If you want to go up in wide receivers, that's going to make the wide receiver position a little bit more valuable because it makes the positional scarcity of the players on the waiver wire less voluminous. So let's say three wide receivers, one tight end, two regular flexes I like to do, and one of these flex, QWRT. That means super flex. You could start a quarterback in the super flex spot. You will never, ever, ever, don't ever, ever, ever play in a dynasty league with kickers or defense. Just trust me on that one. Okay. Bench spots. Here is one of the biggest differences when it comes to dynasty versus we're going to go full screen for this one. So I can yell at y'all. One of the biggest differences between dynasty and every other format that you play in is the sheer roster size. Basically dynasty fantasy football done hit puberty. Okay. You were a 13 year old playing season long leagues. Dynasty is a grown ass 25 year old man working on wall street. So the sheer size of these rosters is very, very different. In most redraft leagues, in most season-long leagues, you're playing with anywhere from like 15 to maybe 18 tops, depending on your starting roster. If you guys are starting like 12 people, maybe you have a bench of up to like eight players and it gets up to like 20 or some shit like that. My favorite size when it comes to active roster spots in Dynasty is 28. So the draft, the startup draft is going to consist of 28 rounds. That's a lot of fucking players. There's a lot of rounds, which does not leave a lot of players on the waiver wire, something that we will talk about a little bit more in depth later on in the video. But going back to sleeper app, 
based on the, the starting settings that you do. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten starters, no kickers, no defense. Just trust me when I tell you, do not do that. I forget how many I just counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten there, which means ten plus eighteen would give us twenty-eight roster spots. That is the point of a dynasty. You have a very large team in which you are managing the roster for a long time. So almost every player that's relevant is picked. You have a large team and you could do a lot with a large team. The strategy differs, right? Do I want to take high upside players on the bench? Do I want to make sure I have a well-rounded roster with a lot of tight ends and a lot of running backs and a lot of wide receivers, et cetera, et cetera. That's what makes this shit fun. When it comes to the two quarterback leagues, there are two main reasons why I I will pitch you on going with super flex or two quarterback, right? The, the only difference between two quarterback and super flex is two quarterback. You have to start two quarterbacks, super flex in that flex spot. If you don't have a second quarterback to start, you can start any other flex player, but you know, quarterbacks just have a natural floor way higher than any other like seventh best player on your roster is going to have. So you always end up starting two quarterbacks. I just like to have the flexibility. If someone's roster just fucking, you know, hits a, a, a really long streak of unluckiness and they just don't happen to have a second quarterback. I prefer super flex over two quarterback. The reason you want to play super flex, it opens up the player pool tremendously. It makes the trade market way, way bigger. And as I'm saying before, the waiver wire, because your dynasty rosters are so large, because everyone owns 28 players, times that out by 12, that's over 300 players gone that could have been on the waiver wire. The waiver wire is really small. So the waiver wire, while every once in a while you might hit on somebody, you know, that makes a difference or an impact on your roster is so, so, so much less important in dynasty leagues. So the way that you actually make moves and the way that you turn over your roster or improve your roster is by trades. Trades are so much more of an impact in dynasty leagues. Trades have so much more of an impact in dynasty leagues than they do in redraft or even keeper leagues. Okay. So keep that in mind. Trades happen. And the less valuable you make positions like quarterback, wide receiver, and tight end, the harder it is to trade, okay? That's why we like to start two quarterbacks, because they have value. That's why we like to you know, start three wide receivers or go tiered scoring, which is something else I'll talk about in a little bit. But we want to make as many positions as valuable as possible, not just whoever owns the two workhorse running backs is going to win the league year over year over year. You want to make all the positions valuable because trades are so high volume, and you want to make sure that you have flexibility to make trades. Point number two, going back to the point I made before, with Dynasty being really popular, Superflex has become really, really popular, right? So a lot of you guys, if you're watching this video, you might be getting into a Dynasty League for the very, very first time. If that's the case, and you're coming back to the channel for Dynasty advice, and you're looking at other podcasts and other content creators, other YouTube channels, other blogs, whatever it may be, and you're looking at Dynasty advice, 99% of the advice you're going to get is relative to super flex leagues. Most people don't talk about one quarterback dynasty leagues. You'll still get plenty of redraft one quarterback analysis, but for the most part, everyone plays in dynasty super flex leagues. So just be forward thinking, start your league that way. And I promise your, your favorite podcasters are not playing in one quarterback dynasty leagues. The other thing to notice here, and I get this question with a lot of younger people, a lot of kids who are like 13, 14, 15, they get antsy, they start the dynasty league, they hear us talking about super flex stuff. And then the next year, the following year, they want to switch up the league settings. You cannot do that. You can't start the league as a one quarterback league and then next summer say, oh, we're making this a super flex. We're making this a two quarterback league. You, you just you just can't do it. It's too impactful of a change. You would have drafted significantly differently. You would have traded significantly differently. I don't know if that uh, what I just did there with the double stack of the words is proper grammar, but I could tell you the proper setting is not to, sh to change from one quarterback to two quarterback. You cannot do that under any, any circumstances. So fuck your life if you think otherwise. All right. So we have a very, very big bench. We want to make trades a very active thing. Y you don't understand, like you could draft 26 to 30 players. And I'm, I'm telling you, like in my dynasty leagues, the ones that I've been in for more than like a year, almost all of my players have been turned over. Like I have completely new teams from the ones that I've drafted. Like the waiver wire frequently, it's a fucking less visited than an abusive father in jail right now. Okay. That's the way dynasty leagues are played. You trade a lot, ton of turnover. Just think accordingly. So we are going to go with this roster setting. There's another point I want to hammer home about trades in dynasty leagues. So your startup draft is going to have as many rounds as active roster spots. So if you say we want to have a roster of 28 players, like I just set it up for you guys, your startup draft, right? The regular, the normal draft that you guys would have 
on September 2nd or whatever to pick your teams, same thing that you do in, in a dynasty league, is 28 fucking rounds, okay? Very long. It's very big. It's crazy. It literally takes over your life. It's insane. You're not going to sleep for about five days because you use slow clocks when you do the draft, eight hours between picks so that you can think on things and marinate and, and trade and stuff like that, which we'll get to again a little bit later in the video. The startup draft, especially the audience I'm talking to right now, ones that haven't played Dynasty before, can absolutely destroy or set you up to crush the league for the next five years. And that was not like a corny way of me saying like, oh, so make sure you set yourself up for success in the startup draft. I meant more in like your league can be destroyed, can be no fun immediately because of the startup draft. People can easily, easily be taken advantage of in Dynasty Leagues if they don't know what they're doing or how to play. This is what I'm talking about when I say, like, this is the most important part of this video when I talk about setting your league up for success in the future. So listen carefully and keep your fucking shirts tucked in. If you're in a league with, like, 10 newcomers and, like, two people who have are seasoned vets or have even been in a couple Dynasty Leagues... Those guys are going to crush you via trades because not because they're smarter, but because they actually understand different value in the startup draft plus trading for future picks. And I'll explain what future picks means a little bit later in the video as well. So when you are doing your startup draft, trades happen. Trades happen very, very frequently in the startup draft, right? You're sitting there and you have the second pick or whatever. You might move your second and third and fourth round pick for somebody's first round pick. All right. So future trades, because the, dra the draft is so big, you have time between picks. People are moving their picks around. People are trading their players while the draft is happening. Okay. It gets crazy. Now I'm not someone who would personally ever turn off trades in my leagues. One, cause I'm the commission. I can control that nothing like fucky is happening around there, but two, it does make the startup draft very fun. If you guys are very new to dynasty, I have a few suggestions on how I would combat the chances of your dynasty startup league getting fucked up. Suggestion number one, would be just to not allow trading in your startup draft whatsoever, okay? So everybody has 28 picks. Everybody makes their 28 picks. No matter what the snake draft setup is, you have your normal picks. So if you are the first overall pick, you get the 101, then you're going to have the 212 and the 301 and so on and so forth. So not allowing trading in the startup draft. I know this will make the draft a lot more boring, but, I'm, but I promise you it will set your league up for far more success going forward. Option number two, if you don't want to do that, allow trading, but but choose a round in which the trading can actually start after that round concludes. So whether that's round three, round five, round seven. So you say, okay, everybody makes their picks for the first three to five rounds, first three rounds, first five rounds, round seven rounds without any trades being happening, right? And this is just the commission thing. You're just saying like, you're not allowed to trade. There's no actual setting for this within Sleeper. But those are the rules that you lay out. And you say, okay, as soon as the 512 is done with, the last pick of the fifth round is done with, people can trade. Too many players, especially new to the Dynasty game, treat Dynasty like a season-long league, right? And they trade away half of their draft to get an additional first-round startup pick. You get the shiny eyes for these shiny players. And you say, oh, it would be really, really fun to, to stack Jonathan Taylor with Javante Williams or Christian McCaffrey. And it would, but it leaves your team in shambles. You have no depth. You'll have no future picks and it'll incentivize you to hate your life after year one. And you say, fuck it. My team is so bad. I, I traded away my entire future. I don't have any depth. There's no way I compete this year. So you went all in on competing in year one, but you couldn't because you don't have depth. And now you're fucked for year two, three, and four. Most season-long players go into their first Dynasty startup draft thinking of what their starting roster could be. That's a problem. That's a big, big problem. So with trading, so with pushing back when you're allowed to actually make trades in a Dynasty startup does is it at least limits the damage that a player is going to inflict on himself if he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. It's not bulletproof whatsoever, but it helps, okay? Because by that point, everybody has, you know, for all intents and purposes, five players of equal value, okay? And you're less likely to want to just ship off players for your, like, okay, I have my five best players. You're not going to want to move them for picks that are later on in the draft because you say, I would have just not drafted that guy if I wanted him at this, you know, you, you took Lamar Jackson in a super flex league in the second round or something. You're not going to trade him for a sixth and a seventh round pick or whatever because you have a better idea of the values in dynasty draft. Just, just trust me, it helps. If you don't want to do that, you can say, Nick, Fuck you. We're good. We know what we're doing. But I promise you, if you're all are newcomers to Dynasty startup drafts, 
you will fuck up your draft. So we could dip back into scoring settings. And again, this is going to be completely predicated on how you guys want to set up your league. I don't necessarily think scoring settings in particular really sway one way or another when it comes to like dynasty versus season long passing yards, you know, either 25 or 20 is what I suggest passing touchdowns. I think this could be kind of interesting. Um, something like six and minus three, just depending on how you want to make quarterbacks valuable versus non-valuable, whatever. Nothing crazy here. Rushing, rush attempts. Why the fuck are you at negative three? Receiving. So obviously you can do full PPR. You can do half PPR. What I would suggest one tiering option that we implemented this year that I really, or we I implemented last year in a couple of my dynasty leagues that I really, really like is this idea of tiered PPR, right? A lot of what I like to do with dynasty is again, making the scoring settings somewhat even for all of the different positions. So quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, all of them have at least some sort of value, right? And in a lot of season long leagues, like if you're playing one quarterback, quarterbacks don't matter. If you're playing just straight half PPR, like tight ends really don't matter outside of the first three or four guys. So you don't care. So what I like to do is have some sort of tiered PPR because running backs are so damn valuable. What we'll do is have receptions tied to one. Actually, we'll set it to 0.5. Sorry, this is what I meant to do. 0.5. So half PPR is the standard. But if you want to have it so it's tiered PPR scoring, we will keep it 0.5 for running backs. We will have an extra 0.5 for wide receivers. So right, everybody gets 0.5 for their normal catch. And then you want an extra reception bonus of 0.5. So that means wide receivers get full PPR. We want one full one for tight ends. So what we're looking at right now is running backs get half a point per reception. Wide receivers get one full point per reception. Tight ends get 1.5 points per reception. So you might say, oh, this just makes the uh, the top tight ends even more valuable. No, this opens up your flex spots to inviting tight ends to play in there. So you might want to grab a few extra mid-round tight ends because they might be getting 1.5 PPR. You might now want to start Dalton Schultz over a fringe. You might have last year, you might have want to start Dalton Schultz over like a Javante Williams. But in a very standard half PPR league, you're probably not doing that. Probably a bad example. You still might have wanted to do that last year. But y'all get the point. This, of course, it does make a guy like Kelsey infinitely more valuable in the rankings because he's going to get such high volume. But it also regulates the flex positions and makes you want to draft guys that are wide receivers or tight ends highly or more highly compared to the running backs that you might have invested heavily in in the middle of the round. So I do like the idea of making all these positions valuable because, again, it opens up the trade market, which is really, really, really important in dynasty leagues. Uh, kicking stuff does not matter because we don't have kickers or defense, so that doesn't matter. Um, and then again, y'all can just do whatever you want to do in terms of special scoring to make your league fun, whatever the fuck y'all want to do. They got bonus stuff. They got miscellaneous stuff. They got all this kind of stuff. I don't really fuck around with any of these bonus points, but again, do it. Do whatever you got to do here. Okay, so draft settings. Some of y'all might be unfamiliar with a slow draft. Now, slow draft is the standard type of drafting you do for a dynasty startup draft. A slow draft is eight hours in between picks. So literally the first person can be on the board. They get onto the clock. They might take eight hours to make their pick. That's how you want to do it for a dynasty startup draft. I promise you, you might be really antsy. You might get, you know, you might want to make that 30 second per pick or two minutes per pick. I promise you don't do that. One, just off the rip, like it's very, very fucking hard to get 12 people to sit and pay attention in that 28 round draft for one. It's going to take five hours. You just don't want to do it. You don't want to fuck your dynasty draft up because you're too antsy and want to pick everybody at the, at the exact moment. You want to have a slow draft. It's an email draft, right? So it gives you notifications every time someone moves. It gives you the opportunity to research, guys. Listen, once you get to like the 21st, 23rd round of the draft, some of y'all might not know a lot of the players left. So you want ample time to, you, okay, you're on the clock. You don't want two minutes in order to research the backup running back from this team versus the third string wide receiver from this team or fourth string, whatever. You want ample time to be able to research when it comes to this shit, okay? So eight hours between pick is perfect. You get a notification when you're on the clock. It also gives you time in between picks to trade and negotiate with people and look at different strategies and consume different content in between your picks. And also, you know, throughout the summer, a lot of news is going to drop. So in terms of when you want to do your dynasty startup, most people get antsy and want to do them like right now. And I get that. I, I think any time is fine. I think any time from now through the end of the summer. What I would say is just be cognizant that these drafts take a long time. A dynasty startup draft with eight hours in between picks, not every pick's going to take eight hours. I might get on the clock and, and take my pick in 30 seconds because I already knew who the fuck I wanted. But remember that the course of 28 rounds, eight hours per pick, 
this draft is going because people are fucking sleeping too, right? People are sleeping. It's going to take days, if not weeks, to finish a draft. This might be a 10-day, 12-day, 17-day draft. It's wild. It's fun. You're going to lose a lot of sleep. It's going to be the thing that you're thinking about the most. I promise you. It is re- every, time I, I, every time I do one, I'm like, yeah, I don't really give a fuck. I'll be fine. Like I won't pay attention to it. Wrong. Incorrect. Fake fucking news. It's going to be the only thing you think about for that entirety of the startup draft. It's tough. So just be prepared for that. Be prepared. Don't say I didn't warn you. Do not say I didn't tell your ass. Okay. So that's how you do the startup draft. So you could just select your, you know, you select your date and time, whenever that may be. Um, you know, say you want to do it August 1st, save draft time, snake draft, time per pick, set it to eight hours. So that's a slow draft. Um, in terms of picking order, right, whatever you would do for a season long league, whatever you do for a redraft league, randomize it if you do it. If you got a contest or some shit you want to rattle off, run it, my friends. Another thing I want to talk about is the buy in, right? You don't want to do a free dynasty league. I mean, if you want to do a free dynasty league, go for it, but know that you're going into it, understanding that it's probably going to fall apart by year two. Because again, people are going to do a lot of moves that make them want to win the championship year one, and then they're going to say, my team sucks year two, three, four. I'm out of this league. They have no incentive to keep playing because they're not paying. Okay, So a free dynasty league, do that literally only for experimentation. Don't go into it with high expectations. What else I want to do, here's what I suggest for buy-ins. You can either use League Safe or Team Stake, Team Stake, S-T-A-K-E e is what i've used uh for a long time i suggest that platform league safe is also really good so either of those two platforms are are fine for buy-ins when it comes to like having people pay i wouldn't do like paypal venmo it gets a little bit confusing for what i'm about to suggest when it comes to the commissioner stuff use one of those buy-in platforms what you want to do is this if you decide on a hundred dollar buy-in league you want everyone at the start to pay an extra 50 percent. that 50 percent goes towards the buy-in for the following year so it incentivizes people to play the following year. They don't get their money back if they leave if they leave after that year. So everyone in year one, it's a hundred dollar buy in. They pay on the platform one hundred and fifty dollars, and their settings on Team Stake or whatever it is uh, to select rollover money. So what you would do is you would set the buy in for one hundred and fifty dollars for that first year. You would have the payouts added up to be twelve hundred dollars, however you want to divvy it up for a second, third place. And you would set rollover money to six uh, $600, right? Because $100 for this year's buy-in times 12 would be $1,200. That extra $50 per person adds up to $600. That rolls over to the following year. So people pay 150% of the buy-in because 50% of that buy-in goes towards next year. And again, if people leave over the off season, they say, hey, I don't want to come back in this dynasty league. They do not get that $50 back or 50% back of the buy-in that they put in for the previous year. So it incentivizes them to think and play for the long term. Suggestion number two, which I would suggest 1 million percent. And it incentivizes, again, like everything we're trying to do incentivizes people from acting in the very short term because when they do that, it gives them more incentive to just leave the league after their short-term plans don't work out. People want to trade, like it's 2022. People that join Dynasty Leagues in this year are, are going to be trying to trade away their future picks, 2024 picks, 2025 picks or whatever. That will ruin your league as well because they're not thinking about it. They don't care about it. All they want to do is win right now. So here's what you want to do in that case. You enact a rule that says if you want to trade future picks, you have to pay the buy-in for up to that year. Both players involved in the trade have to pay the buy-in for up to that year. So you say, okay, we're doing our startup draft in 2022. I have all my picks for 2023, 2024, 2025. I will explain what that means if you don't under, if you're not following me right now in a second. If you have those picks and you want to trade them, you say, "Hey, I'm getting rid of all my 2024 for, uh, picks, my 2025 picks because I want to win right now." Okay, do that, but you have to pay the buy-in for each league year going forward. Also, I should put in if you pay the 150, if you do the rule where you pay 150% up front, each year is not 150 after that. Each year is just $100. It's the 50% you're paying for this year, and then the 50% you're going to pay for the following year. So it's 150 to start, and then 100 each year after that. But what that does is, again, it incentivizes people from just being like, okay, I just want to win right now, and then I'm going to leave the league. Sure, you could trade away all your future picks, but you're going to have to pay $400 in order to do so. That is a good incentive that I've never had problems with my leagues, and I really, really, really highly suggest you do that. Okay, the other huge difference between season-long and Dynasty Leagues is what we call the rookie draft. 
a lot of my content over the last two or three months, a lot of me and Noah's content over the last two or three months has been predicated on getting y'all familiarized with the rookie class incoming as well as rookie drafts and where you should be taking those guys. So in a normal fantasy league, you have one draft that happens in you know July, August, September, whenever you guys have your normal drafts, and you pick all the players. Every player that's going to be playing this year, you pick from them. Because your dynasty startup draft is so vast, 28 fucking rounds, you have all the players on your teams, and you keep those players year over year, right? Every player on your roster stays on your team year over year. So you don't have a new draft every year comprising of all the players. What you have is a rookie-only draft. It's a draft that typically happens, and again, you could do the rookie draft whenever you want. Some leagues have it. They, they wait till August, so they know everything they can possibly know about the rookie class before they actually do the draft. Most leagues have it uh, right after the NFL draft because people are itching. They're, you know, they want to get back into fucking football mode and fantasy football mode. So they have the rookie draft. As soon as the NFL draft happens, your dynasty league has its rookie draft. But you can do the settings however you want. You could do it before the NFL draft. You could do it right after the NFL draft. I know people that start it literally after the first night of the NFL draft. It could be a week after. It could be a month after. It could be three months after, right before the start of the season. But each year, your dynasty league has a rookie draft. And that's the only draft you're going to have each year. Now, I should say, I should preface saying that it is a rookie-only draft, but it does include all of the players on the waiver wire as well. So it could be veterans as well. But as I've said before, all the waiver wire, all the players that are on the waiver wire, all the vets are, are pretty much fucking cheeks, right? Otherwise, they would have picked, been picked up. So it's guys like, I don't know, like, for instance, like, I don't know, Justin Hardy or something on the Falcons. He's going to be available on your waiver wire in your dynasty league. You didn't want to pick him up to begin with. But if you're in your rookie draft, and let's say, like, I don't know, Justin Hardy got picked up he was a free agent and the Packers picked him up and you say okay maybe Justin Hardy is a little bit intriguing now that he's on the Packers maybe you want to use a rookie draft pick on Justin Hardy now he's on the Packers you have the availability to choose any rookie incoming as well as any player that's available on the waiver wire so it's a rookie plus waiver wire draft every league that I'm in every rookie draft I do is four rounds, okay? So it's not 16, it's not 28, it's just four rounds. I would never suggest going fewer than four rounds. I have seen leagues that do five or six. I've never seen more than that. I think four is the sweet spot because, again, the more rounds that you do, the more rookies that you pick, the more players that you're going to have to cut from your active roster, right? Because you have 28 players on your roster, right? That's that's how you play forever. If you pick nine players in the rookie draft, guess what? You're going to have to cut your roster down to 28 some way or another, whether that's just straight up, cutting five of the rookies that you just picked, that would be fucking pointless, or cutting five veterans that you might not have wanted to cut. So I think four is a sweet spot. One thing I do to kind of combat this in my leagues is I expand our roster by four, our active roster by four, right before the rookie draft, okay? So if we play with 28 active roster spots, I will expand that to 32 so that you can pick your four rookie players without having to cut anybody and put them on the taxi squad, which I'll talk about in a sec as well. And then after the draft, you can make your decisions on who you want to cut. Because if you don't do that, then you're just not allowed to take rookie players, and that's no fun. So I'm going to explain how the rookie draft works in a sec. But first, I want to talk about taxi squads. Taxi squads are one of the other interesting wrinkles to dynasty leagues that you will not find in other types of leagues. Taxi squads are basically like your G league. Taxi squads are your practice squads, like the NFL practice squad, where it's like you could have 53 active players on game day, but you have a, a the practice squad of, I don't know how many players on a practice squad, maybe 23 or 40 or some shit like that. That's what a taxi squad is in dynasty leagues. So typically you have a taxi squad that does not affect your active roster. So if you have 28 active roster spots, you'll also have a taxi squad that does not affect the 28, the number 28 of active roster. Taxi squads can be made up of anywhere from one to eight players. Again, I think four is a sweet is a sweet spot. A lot of player, a lot of leagues like to do more. So five or six taxi squad players, which is fine with me. I again, I like four. Four seems to be the sweet spot for everything in Dynasty. So the taxi squad are for players that you know you don't don't think are going to make an impact in year one, but you don't you know you like them you know they're one of your like late round sleepers or whatever, but you know they're not going to make an impact right away. However, you don't want to drop them, but you don't want them taking up space on your active roster for players who you might put into your lineup at one point or another during the season. So it's its own four person roster basically that you put players on as a rookie. You cannot put, you know, and, and again, it depends on your league setting, but my favorite league setting is that you're only allowed to put rookies on this. Some leagues do it where if you're a rookie or a sophomore or a third-year player, you can go on the uh, the uh, the taxi squad. I like to say 
only rookies can go on the taxi squad and there's actually settings within sleeper so let's go to that okay so when you go down here supplemental draft rounds in the general league settings you could set to four rounds taxi squad slots uh supplemental draft rounds is just uh, another way of saying rookie draft so supplemental draft rounds that would be four so the rookie draft is four rounds taxi squad slots four all right allow non-rookies on the taxi so that's up to you guys if you want to allow sophomores you can check this box cool we do not allow sophomores on it unless here's what i like to do rookies are the only ones that can be actively placed onto the taxi squad however you can leave them onto the taxi squad for more than one year you can leave them on the taxi squad for up to two years so say um let's say for instance you drafted darrington evans right i don't even remember when his rookie year was but when he was a rookie you drafted him in your rookie draft you put him onto your taxi squad because you say no fucking way in hell that he's going to play over Derrick Henry this year. He's going to be useless to me, but I think Darrington Evans is awesome. I think he's going to make an impact a year or two years down the line. And, and you know, I, I think they might move off of Derrick Henry's contract or some shit. So I think next year he has a chance to play on my active roster. So what you would do, is you put him on your taxi squad and you leave him there. You do not take him off. Okay. So as long as you leave him there as a rookie, you can leave him there through his second year as well. You cannot place non-rookies onto the taxi squad, but if you left them there through their rookie year and you leave them there on their sophomore year, you are allowed to do that. So, for example, right, Darrington Evans, you say, oh, fuck, he didn't play at all his rookie year. I was banking on the fact that they moved off of Derrick Henry's contract. They traded him to another team. They didn't. They signed it. They, they franchise tagged them or something. So that means Darrington Evans sitting on the bench for another year. Keep him on the taxi squad, okay? Don't take him off, though, because once he's a non-rookie, you cannot place him back on. That's the settings that I do. That's the settings that I like. Um, taxi squad, and, and you could set it like no max. Um, so that means like you, if you put them onto your taxi squad as a rookie and you don't take them off, you can leave them there forever. Uh, two years, you can leave them there going into the third year. Three years, fourth year, et cetera, et cetera. Very self-explanatory. So I like to do one year. So player with more than one year of experience in the NFL must be activated from the taxi squad. So I guess maybe I would I would make that a two years based on my explanation. Taxi squad deadline. This is basically the deadline for when you have to put your players on the taxi squad. I just do it at the start of the regular season. So if you have the Darrington Evans and you want to put them on the taxi squad, have to do it right before kickoff. And once if you take them off the taxi squad midseason, you cannot put them back on. Again, guys, this is like this is really like a closet for your team. You're just storing these motherfuckers away for a year, two years down the line. You're not able to move them on and off. So say you have Darrington Evans. Derrick Henry ended up getting hurt. Darrington Evans becomes a starter for Tennessee. You want to place him into your active roster. You want to start him in your flex spot. You have to take him off the taxi squad, which will impact the number of active roster spots you have, right? Because now you're adding a 29th player on. You've got to cut a player from the 28th player or from the 28 active roster spots. So you're going to cut a player. You're going to move Darrington Evans onto your bench, and then you're going to move him to your starting lineup. You cannot put him back onto the taxi squad, though. Once the deadline of start of regular season hits, he cannot be placed back onto the taxi squad. So going back to what I was talking about, that is the reason why we expand the rosters right before the rookie draft. So the rookie draft is about to happen. We expand the roster by four spots so that people can draft players that they want to put on their taxi squad. They can, after the draft, take off guys that ended up being terrible and they no longer want to hold on the previous year's taxi squad, like fucking, I don't know, like Anthony Schwartz or something. Like you're like, okay, he's, he's never going to make an impact. Get him off my taxi squad. Let me put a new rookie onto the taxi squad. You expand that, and then once new players are put on the taxi squad, whatever, then you can then you can put the roster size back down to 28 from 32 and let people make their decisions accordingly. So, okay, let's talk about the rookie draft, just general talking points right now. So again, the rookie draft, similar to any normal fantasy football draft, except it is not a snake draft. The startup draft is a snake draft, which means if you have the first pick overall, you're not picking again until the 12th pick of the second round, right? And then you also get the first pick of the third round. The rookie draft does not work that way. The rookie draft is linear. So the draft order is based on the previous league's standings, previous year's league standings. So say you won the championship, you're going to have the last pick of the, of the rookie draft. Say you were last place, like you were the worst team in the league, you're going to have the first pick in the rookie draft. So you have the 101. You're going to hear that thrown around all the time. You probably already know it if you've been following fantasy football, just redraft in general too. But four rounds, if you're the worst team in the league, you're going to have the 101. You're going to have the first pick in the rookie draft. You're also going to have the 201, the 301, and the 401. So the first number indicates the round in the rookie draft. So 301 would mean 
first pick of the third round. The numbers after the period would mean the actual pick in that round. So 201 means the first pick of the second round. The 206 means the sixth pick of the second round. The 212 means the 12th pick of the second round. So if you're the worst team in the league, you get the 101, the first pick of the first round, the 201, the first pick of the second round, the 301, and the 401. So you get the first pick of all the rounds. If you're the, if you're the championship team, you get the 112, 212, 312, 412. That's the difference between snake drafts, redraft leagues, and dynasty rookie drafts. So keep that in mind. Basically, that's what I mean by trading future picks, right? You start your league in 2022. You do a startup draft this year. On your on your team, you'll see in Sleeper. Let me uh, throw up one of my leagues. I already traded away. It's probably not a good example, but whatever. You'll see on the bottom of your roster, you will see this is my taxi squad right here. Kellen Mond, Pierre Strong, Malik Willis, Sam Howell. Those are four guys that I don't expect to play this year, but I would like to have on my fantasy team without having to take up an active roster spot. So they're just going to sit there until hopefully one of them gets a starting shot. But you'll see draft picks, right? 2023 first round, 2023 third round and fourth round. I already traded away my second round pick, but you'll see these, right? These are your future picks. And this is what I'm talking about, people wanting to trade away their future picks. You'll have all these, 2023, 2024, 2025, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes on. And you can do whatever you want with those. But again, I really highly suggest that if players, if you want to go trade, like you can, you know, I could go trade and pick T-Rock. What's up, Tariq? And I say, hey, I want to trade for his draft picks. I'm going to go down to 2025. I want his 2025 third round pick. You have the ability to do that. I can trade him George Pickens next and send the trade offer. You can do it, but I would I would suggest not allowing people to do so. So yeah, this is the active roster right now. It's a big fucking squad. I have two IR spots. That's usually how I play with. One other note on IR spots, man. I fucking hate this setting for a lot of people. IR, in Dynasty at least, should only be allowed for players that are on the fucking IR. If you're not on the IR in real life, you should not be allowed to be put on the IR in the Dynasty League, okay? If you're out for a game, if you're out for one fucking game, you shouldn't be allowed on the IR spot. You're not on the fucking IR. You're not on the injured reserve. So stop doing that shit in your leagues. If you're on the IR, you can go on the IR. If you're on the pup list, put them on the IR. That's like where the line is drawn though, okay? That's where we stop. So yeah, you could trade your rookie picks. I could trade players from my 2023 picks right now or vice versa and in your rookie draft you could have as many picks as possible like that's the thing that's what makes this fun you will almost never see like everybody has their original picks uh for instance one of the leagues i was in this year that league that i actually just showed you the roster of i had the i might fuck this up a little bit but i had i believe the 103 the 111 the 23 the 24 26 27 304 44 something like that uh, so a lot of trades happen again. So you end up, by the time the rookie the rookie picks happen, having a really scattered draft. You can go into the rookie draft and have zero picks. I know a lot of people that just trade their future away and don't have any picks in the rookie draft. I know a lot of people that go into it and get 10 picks in the rookie draft. But again, understand that you will have to cut players on your active roster if you have 15 rookie picks. It's cool to have 15 rookie picks, but then you're you're choosing guys to cut that you just literally drafted. So keep that in mind. When you're trading in Dynasty Leagues, and you're trading for someone's future pick. Also, the worst teams have the most valuable rookie picks, right? If you're trading with a guy who's going to be, that he's probably going to be, he has a worse roster, he's probably going to finish in last place, his first round pick is super fucking valuable because he's probably going to have the 101 or the 102 or the 103 in the rookie draft, and that means you're scoring one of the best players in the draft, right? This year, if you had the 101, you're getting Brees Hall. Last year, you're getting Trevor Lawrence. You're, you know, Saquon Barkley a couple of few years ago. Those kind of things. And those are game-changing type picks, okay? So the 101 is so much more valuable than the 112 or the 111 or whatever. So keep that in mind when you are trading. Another note when it comes to rookie picks, some leagues like to differentiate rookies from startups. So the way I've always played and the way I would suggest doing it, when you're doing your startup draft, include just include rookies in the draft. Include every player in the draft pool when you're doing your startup draft. Some leagues like to separate the startup draft and the rookie draft. Say you want to do your dynasty draft right now and you wanted to do a dynasty startup and you only did veterans in there, everyone that's a non-rookie, you could do that. And then you have a rookie draft, the four round rookie draft right after that. And a lot of people will say like, okay, you know, the one, tw uh, whoever had the 101 in the startup draft is going to get the 112 in the rookie draft or vice versa. 
I think that's a stupid way of doing it because the value of rookies is so drastic from year to year that like that doesn't feel like a fair trade off. So I would just suggest doing all of the players in a pool together. I feel like we're kind of getting down to the end of this video. Thank God, because we are approaching on like a fucking hour long and probably no one wanted to watch this or listen to this. Just a few other notes I want to leave you with outside of that. Um, and if I miss anything scoring or settings, or you're confused about anything I said, please just drop a comment and I'll try to clarify as best as I can. Trade deadline, don't leave it open for the playoffs. I know you might say like, oh, this is a year round sport. So you should be able to trade year round. Like the NFL is a year round sport and they have a fucking trade deadline as well. Do not have the trade deadline encroach into the fucking playoffs. It will ruin your league. I promise you that because it's another opportunity for guys to just sell everything of their future to try to get that championship right now and will ruin it'll, they'll try to drop out afterwards if they don't win the championship so i would shut it down the trade deadline just like a normal fantasy football league you know most most leagues have it like week 12 maybe week 13 now that they've expanded it for an extra week i would put it around then a month or so before the actual playoffs start that's when i would do the trade deadline you know if you want to do it up until the playoffs sure but i would not allow trades in the playoffs especially for fucking teams that are not in the playoffs okay fab Fab's the other thing, the waiver wire. So Fab is how I suggest doing your waiver wire. This is how I suggest doing it for season long and redraft leagues, just to give you a quick you know, explanation of what Fab is, rather than doing a waiver wire where it's like, okay, you're first on the waiver wire pecking order, or you're seventh on the waiver wire pecking order, and you have priority. Everybody starts the year with $100 of Fab. There's a blind bid. So you're saying, okay, our blind bid will register on Wednesday morning. So you put in a bid based on the $100 that you have. You say, hey, I want to pick up Fucking Julio Jones off the waiver wire because he was dropped. I'm going to place $15 to get him. Everybody else has the opportunity to go above or below that, but they don't see anyone else's bid. Okay. Um, again, I'm not here to explain fab because it's not just a dynasty thing. So if you want to look up fab, I, this is the only way I would fucking ever play dynasty. Leagues. Never, ever, ever do waiver wire, just straight up priority or a free for all. Never allow a free for all in a dynasty startup league on the waiver wire. Do fab. What I would suggest for fab is you get two sets of fab money. In the off season, everybody gets $100. So right after the rookie draft takes place or right after your dynasty startup takes place, everybody gets $100 of fab that lasts them until the start of the regular season. As soon as the regular season hits, that money resets. doesn't matter how much you spent. doesn't matter how little you spent. If you spent all $100 of your off-season fab, you get $100 again when the regular season starts. If you spent $0 of your off-season fab, that shit does not roll over. You don't get $200 of fab to start the regular season, okay? So $100 off-season, $100 regular season. The way we do our fab during the regular season is... It runs every single morning except Monday, Tuesday, right? You don't want to have waiver wires running on Monday and Tuesday in, in season when the games are running. You want it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every single morning, we do it like 5 a.m. Eastern time, a blind bid runs. During the offseason, we do it once a week, okay? Because it's it's hard to follow everything going on in the offseason when you're not actually paying attention to fantasy football stuff. So we let everybody get their bearings and like do their research throughout the week on rookies and shit like that, training camp buzz. Every Wednesday, we have it processed. So in the offseason, you get $100, and the blind bid goes through once a week. As soon as a regular season starts, the blind bid goes through every single day, Wednesday through Sunday. $100 lasts you the entirety of the season. Oh, right. I forgot to tell those people who are trying to join a Dynasty League. If you can't, if you simply can't get 12 people together to start a league with your friends or whatever that aren't committed enough, you could join our Discord. Our Discord is completely free to join. You're with other people in our audience. You're with the big dog members. You're with other people that want to start Dynasty League. So you can hop in there. There's a channel called Join BDG Dynasty League. You'll you'll jump in there, tell tell people what you want your buy-in to be, $50, $100, $250 if you're a fucking baller. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to be a commissioner, that would be fantastic. Just drop that in the note and you say, hey, uh, I want to start up a Dynasty League. We'll do a $100 buy-in. I'll be the commissioner. We'll start it up on Sleeper. Who wants in? Send me your email, right? That fucking simple. You have other people within our audience that want to join your sheesh. So that link will be down below to join the BDG Discord as well as probably pinned in the in the comment section. So yeah, guys, like I just wanted to try to set you up with the most success to have longevity within your Dynasty League. And these settings, this type of stuff is the way that I've personally found the most success. If you have other league settings that you think are better, that you think are good additions on top of what I said, please drop them in the comments for other people to go see them. And just to recap, the biggest differences between season long and redraft leagues and dynasty leagues, one, the roster sizes are enormous in dynasty leagues. You carry your entire roster with you year over year over year. Okay. So the waiver wire is bare. Trading is a huge, huge part of dynasty leagues. Even the most active season long leagues 
in terms of trading don't touch or compare to the amount of trades that go through in dynasty leagues. Change number two, rookie drafts. You have a draft once a year, just like a normal fantasy league, but it comprises of only rookies. This draft is not snake, it's linear. So if you're the worst team in the league, you have the first pick in the rookie draft and the first pick of all four rounds in the rookie draft. Another big change, the taxi squad. Again, that's like the closet. You're throwing guys into the closet. You're letting them sit there for a year, two years until you want to activate them. They can only be rookies when you put them on the taxi squad. They do not affect your actual active roster number. And the other suggestions I have, again, if you guys are new, I cannot emphasize this enough. You're going to fuck your league up in the startup draft. One person or two people are going to dominate it. They're going to own all the future rookie picks. They're going to trade you away their first round startup pick and get your second, third, fifth, sixth, seventh pick and just absolutely dominate you. Depth is important. Youth is important. Your future is fucking important. So don't be an idiot. Think things through. We have plenty of strategy type videos on the channel again. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel to get smacked in the face with everything we have to offer to you when it comes to fantasy football. I believe that is it. Again, any questions, drop them down below. You can follow me on Twitter at Nick Ercolano. You could follow us on any of the platforms as a brand at BDGE2 underscores. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. Join our Discord. And uh, I love y'all. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.